what I'm learning is with, with Nikki, I get to enjoy the growth and the maturity and the, mm. and, and the unique personality that she's becoming as this, not child, but as this person that, and this is, this is beautiful for me. Um, how do I get to learn from my beautiful daughter? Well, welcome to the True Man Podcast. Now, if you're catching this on video, you're like, Mike, you're not alone. No, I am not alone. In fact, this is a very special podcast. Anybody that's watching this on video, and I, I, you know, I'd love it if you are, you can see that Mr. Paul Bailey is making an appearance here on the True Man Podcast. Now, Paul, yes, sir. the original co-host of the show this goes back to may 2021 and here we are um at the time we're recording this as a matter of fact we're making true man history uh once again we are uh it's 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 the last weekend in october we are outside this is our first official uh true man podcast outside we've right. never done that right uh we are at a retreat center in black mountain North Carolina. That's just outside of Asheville. And all we see around us, and I wish we could swing a camera around and show you this, is fall color. It is absolutely gorgeous. And Paul Bailey is with me. That's even the best as we record this. Paul, welcome back to the True Man Podcast. Always a pleasure to have, you know, the original, the one and only Paul Bailey on the podcast. I appreciate that. It's good. It's good. It's good to be back. Um, we've got uh, kind of a babbling book, Brook, uh, in the background. Oh man, all colors. It's probably about seventy-two degrees, uh, so it's certainly not wintry. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Or fallish uh, by any stretch, but um, my favorite time of year. It doesn't get oh, any better man. than this in the uh, uh, Appalachian uh, uh, Mountains uh, here. No, you know, and really, as it goes, the only thing missing here, I think, is. Uh, Probably uh, a pumpkin spice latte and or, you know, an adult beverage. That's how we started out. In fact, I have very fond memories of us having a heck of a time hitting the record button. And it did take uh, a couple of adult beverages, of, if I remember correctly, to, to hit that record button. And now, look at this. We just hop on effortlessly yep. and go. Um, can't do the... the uh, uh aforementioned beverage uh, other than a pumpkin spice latte uh, available at clouds Ca uh, cafe up the, <laughs> here at the uh, fully um, unbelievable stocked uh, Christian center also known as Ridgecrest um, complete with coffee shop uh, espresso you name it they can they can serve it so yeah I gotta say as retreats go um, we're not roughing it exactly uh, this has to be uh, one of the best <laughs> retreat centers I've ever been to in my life it is phenomenal uh it is like a hotel the room we're saying in it is is absolutely amazing and you know paul that brings up a very good point right off the top now you know um retreats are something that comes up quite often getting away slowing down i talk about this quite a bit so here we are at a retreat weekend and i'm going to i'm going to say the group it's uh True Face is the organization, and you can look them up online. Uh, is it trueface.org or dot, dot, dot com? I don't, I, go to True Face, search it. You will find this, this wonderful organization. And we're at this retreat weekend, enjoying really going deeper with God. It, Paul, what has this weekend meant for you so far? Yeah, great, great question. Um, well, true to the uh, true face mandate that is i believe they start with uh, being real first being mm -hmm. honest uh, saying what's true about you about what's going on in your life what's true about god i'd have to say that i'm a little surprised because i did not know exactly uh, what to expect yeah i'm used to typically a little more um, rustic accommodation <laughs> Uh, at some point, probably need to sweep uh, sand out of the bed sheets yeah. or, uh, you know, um, clean up the bottom of a, of a, of a boot from uh, maybe uh, a sticky marshmallow uh, dropped around the <laughs> s'mores ring. Um, at some point, there's probably 
gum in my hair. From, yeah. You know, just those sorts of things. Um, but nonetheless, uh, True Face uh, chose to, to, to do a setting uh, that was really easy come, easy go. So it was no, no, yeah. we, had, no we had to lift, lift a finger. We needed to, uh, we were able to jump right into it. So with that, with that said, it was awesome to be able to, to, to step into a room where the assumption was we're going to be honest about life. Mm -hmm. There's no pressure to perform. Um, there's no, uh, performance yeah. uh, that's going to drive the weekend, uh, either from the front of the room or from any of the participants. In fact, one of our, uh, uh small groups, uh, sitting around, um, his, his wife, uh, decided, you know what, she's going to take a couple days off, came to the co conference is engaging from a distance uh, yeah. and needed to recharge her batteries. So that's what she's going to do. You know, what? no judgment. That's absolutely that's the story that she's writing with God for her weekend. Yeah. Her husband's in a different, little different spot, uh, leader of the table. And, uh, I think what, what they offered, uh, last night and both this morning is exactly what I needed. And I'm, I'm talking about, I suppose we're all scared of this word theology. <laughs> Simply, what does it mean to know God well? And, wh and what, what, what can we learn in a setting like this about who God is a little bit more intimately, a little deeper definitions of some of these words that we throw around, like grace, yeah, sonship, yeah, um, being beloved, um, chosen, and all the ramifications of boots hitting the ground uh, nine to five Monday through Friday, as opposed to just these ethereal concepts that sound good on a Sunday but can't be practiced during the week. So yeah, I'm getting a little a little taste of some yeah. theology that sounds really uh good and one of the things that we heard last night and i won't recite the whole the whole thing was simply we've been taught some some bad theology in church yeah. and yeah. those those lessons stick stick with us and they flavor and color the way we view ourselves our god and others and i just loved hearing uh the speaker talk about things we need to um do a little course correction on as far as defining who we are in God. And, and there's a multitude of things he brought up, but um, one of the things, just this is one of the things that I've grabbed a hold of that I've had a trouble for a long time on is, do I still need to ask forgiveness of my yeah, that was... <laughs> And the answer is, <laughs> yeah, no, no. Why? That's the question. Did we at one point? Absolutely. Why don't we ask forgiveness anymore as redeemed people, sons of God? Because it was one and done. Yeah. I can repent. I can move away from bad decisions, stinking thinking, as it's called, uh, poor choices. But to come to God again and ask to get back into his favor, nope, never left his favor, even when I was behaving badly. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Paul. I I, I love, well, first of all, I love being around smart people. I, I love being around people that have thought this through at a much deeper level than I don't want to say that I have the ability to, but I love it when they 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 bring me up. And I I I was telling Paul this last night. I said, you know, um, we started hearing the speaker last night, and I started out and I started to check out a little bit, and I thought, oh man, here we're going down this rabbit hole. And then it occurred to me after he was about ten minutes in, no, 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 hold on, I I I I need to hear this. Wait, he's got this figured out. And, you know, I think a lot of us grew up in a church where, you know, we heard certain things said. And what I love about the evolution of, of scholars and learners and educators is we've had well, 2000 years to sit with this and try to figure it out and diagnose this. And, um, you know, turns out, we might not have had it right the first time around. Right, right. The people that teach are only as good as their understanding of God and the scriptures. Mm, yeah. And unfortunately, and obviously, they're not prone to perfection. They're available to mistakes and misinterpretation and their own issues, yep. which they bring to their work to their 
jobs as leaders, as pastors, as teachers, as counselors. And if it's not born of pure truth and it's flavored with others' issues, we're going to be led down some wrong paths and teaching people to be sorry for their <laughs> poor choices in the form of now you need to go back and make nice with God. Yeah, I'm going to guilt it out of you. Teaches us that salvation, while it's free on the printed page, isn't really free in, in the everyday average yeah. person's life. And what's that like to live with? And then how do you treat your spouse, your kids, your coworkers, if that's your view of how forgiveness works? Now, you're caught in this cycle of grace that isn't really grace. You're kind of going back into yeah. a works-oriented and salvation. And that's who needs that. I can get that on my own. <laughs> Wait, well, you know, let's talk about this at a, at a, at a deeper level. Uh, let, let's talk about this as fathers, right? Yeah, sure. That's probably a good jumping off point because, you know, we've <laughs> both of us have gone through a little transition here. Seasons have shifted a little bit. Big time. And uh, boy, I, I think grace is required. Knowledge is required. Patience is required. And that's why getting away on a weekend like this and, and, and being able to think through these things and hear some of these things is, is critically important because we want to be the best fathers that we can, that we can be because turns out our kids probably need us even more than we thought. Well, at noon tomorrow, everybody takes off. Everybody leaves yeah. and they go back to the worlds in which they live. Worlds that are demanding us show up. Yep. And hopefully speaking to their lives with a sense of safety, of security. I was telling you just a minute ago, work since we're bunking together. <laughs> one of the things that I've been thinking about more recently is what messages have my kids internalized yes. based on their experience of me as, as their dad. And I'd like to report that I always offered a safe haven for their hearts, mm -hmm. um, allowed them space to process without judgment, but that's just not true. I've failed many times to recognize that as a father, my first responsibility is to model God's unconditional love and patience for me as his son. And quite frankly, I'd like to get on to the next good thing as opposed to deal with the messiness. <laughs> but yet the messiness shows up. Well, the messiness actually turns out to be the life that we're going back to. And without a fresh way of thinking about that, without internalizing some of the things that we're being reminded of this weekend, um, we'll go back demanding, maybe not spoken, but unspoken, good behavior, performance that warrants our favor. And unfortunately, as my kids look at me as their first experience of authority and ultimately of God, yeah. I'd like to offer them something a little closer to who God actually is instead of my interpretation. And that's flavored by the issues. Who is God then? What does that look like, Paul? Well, I can, I can talk about my 18 and 19, 18 year old daughter, 19 year old son, as it relates to that, that question in that I'm reminded that the first experience that, that I want them to walk away from having encountered me over the course of, I guess, I guess years. So it wouldn't be the first, it'd be multiple experiences is that dad ha has in his heart, first of all, acceptance above anything else. Dad's a, a safe place to be. I can say anything and share my heart without any sense of judgment. Mm. So that's, that's who God is to me and, who he's become to me because I had to unlearn some things. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. Isn't it fair to say that, oh man, a lot of guys as fathers find it. I mean, this has just been my experience talking with guys. They find it, they find it hard to be in that space that you were just talking about. Right. Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard, so hard for guys? And I, I recognize this is probably vulnerable, right? Well, certain, certainly yeah. that that's a given, which, which of course, isn't going to be our natural inclination to no. lean, lean into anything that we are not in control of or can promise predictability. But I, I don't think that all of this comes from a place of demandingness. I think that a lot of us are hard, if I can use that term, hard on our kids because we, we do want the best for them. Yeah. And so we have a tendency to overreact as it relates to their behaviors and tie their behaviors to their person. <laughs> you mean like we do to ourselves? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, so knowing that it's ultimately not up to me yeah. to help my kids know God and navigate life well, but seeing myself more as a, as a guide uh, as opposed to a responsible party mm. feels very freeing that I can maybe um, open my hand a little bit more, loosen the rein, so to speak. If I know that ultimately God is going to do the work that he's going to do. And it's not a reflection on my ability uh, to, to uh, father. Well, at the end of the day, that's up to him as I mm. respond to the opportunities in front of me. The outcome is totally in his, his hands. And for many, many years, I wouldn't be able to say this out loud or articulate it, but I really thought the outcome was my responsibility. I think that's a natural thing to say as a father for most guys, right? Because we have children. They are our children, you know, we bring them home from the hospital and then we try to control every aspect. Well, we, we do want to save them from pain. Yeah. We, we do want to save them Fair. from the blowback of bad choices. However, I'm being reminded, especially with my 18 year old daughter, that while I have that strong desire and that's placed in me by God, the best I can do is to influence, not control. Because if the control worked, yeah. we'd have perfect kids. <laughs> because I'm really, I'm, turns out I'm really good at control. Yeah. But that's not worked because control never works with the heart but influence does. And so I get to go down the path of what sort of creative ways do I get to influence my kids to offer them life and, and a different way of looking at things versus trying to get in front of the pain. Sometimes pain's necessary to learn these lessons. And by so, by so doing, I end up cheating my kids out of a, a well-learned lesson by controlling and shielding them. And so that's all about my, my desire to not see them in pain. And that's a good thing it, until it actually forces me yeah. to cheat them. And also, it's not a reflection of who I am, my worth. My kids' success, if I can use that word, their obedience to the Father, their willingness to engage in truth, I can't control that. I can influence it. So ultimately it's not a reflection on who I am as, as a father. And when I, when I can give that to the father, I'm free then to influence and love and let him take care of that outcome. It's all we have, isn't it, Paul? I, now, listen, a lot of people, and you can talk about this as much or as little as you, as you would like. You know, one of the things that I love about the true man podcast is that if people come on, they tell their stories, they're, they're, they're vulnerable. And I think that's very helpful 
uh, for, for fathers that are listening, for, for their children that are listening, for grandfathers, uh, for really anybody, but you've been going through a challenging time. Yeah. With your kids. Yes. And I, I do think that, 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 you know, l- let's address that a little bit and you can touch on it as much or, or as little as you want. Cause I don't, I don't try to pretend on this program that I have all the answers. Um, I, I'm searching for the answers just like you are. So let's talk about that a little bit. Let's touch on that. Sure. Last year we, we came to realize that, um, with my, my daughter, Nicoletta, um, uh, approaching her uh, junior year, um, excuse me, approaching her senior year, uh, coming up in the year that she had a boyfriend and things seemed to be really good on the surface. Yeah. Daughter is a very generous hearted, thoughtful, creative individual with her own set of challenges. Of course, little did we know she'd placed an awful lot of value, uh, maybe, maybe of her self worth in this boy who which a lot of kids at that age do certainly right yeah yep. and we've all probably been through that absolutely. ourselves absolutely and, and and the reality is we've always encouraged relationship yeah so without going into a lot of detail yeah we found ourselves uh in crisis as she made some really poor choices in the face uh, of an unexpected breakup. And that led to hospitalization and several months of downward spiraling, uncharacteristic of this energetic, hopeful, creative little girl that I had become very attached to. (laughs) Um, we had adopted all our kids close to birth. And so they're ours and yeah. we know them. We know them well, but on account of a number of poor choices, we found ourselves having to make some really difficult decisions, having come to the realization that our hometown was probably not the place that uh, my daughter needed to finish out her senior year. It's a big county, but it's a small county. Yeah. And I suppose her concern about people knowing what's going on, memories, all the above, uh, would potentially hamper her growth and getting beyond. And so 4 a.m. one morning in August, she was whisked away to a girls' academy slash ranch in Montana. Um, where she is right now and doing very, very well, of which we just uh, returned um, last weekend from a family visit slash workshop, which turns out to be far more about us than our daughter as it relates to what we're learning about about ourselves and tools that we can use to help influence. Yeah. So the um, story is half written. Yeah. It relates to this. Yeah, you're in the middle of it. Yep. Don't, don't have a conclusion. Can't can't wrap it up with a lesson. Can't wrap it up uh, with a, a tidy uh, final chapter. Yeah. Uh, this is how you do it. Uh, here's how the solution look looks. The the formula is that we don't. It's not available to us. But the beauty in it, Paul, as I see it, is just like our heavenly Father would do anything for us. Yes. You have stepped in to help your daughter and you've gone to incredible lengths, no doubt about it, to try to help her and get her on track. And that's what fathering is all about. It it, it is. And sometimes you have to abandon your uh, presuppositions about what it looks like to, to parent. Yeah. And I can't tell you all of those right yet because probably more will pop up. <laughs> I'm sure. But a couple uh, occur to me as we're talking. And, and one is 
I think the biggest hindrance to my parenting for both of my kids has been that I have something in my mind about what things are supposed to look like, how they're supposed to play out and to, and to have the courage yeah. to lay that down and say, I don't care whatever it takes. I'm going to take the next step that occurs to me that I know is going to be beneficial and I'm willing to abandon all my ideas yeah. of what it requires to get this outcome that I had led myself to believe yeah. was the, the ultimate end goal. Yeah. So no, I didn't expect to find myself out of South Carolina on, on a plane <laughs> headed for Montana or Idaho. As it I thought that might be out. you and I, you and I going to cowboy camp at some point, but absolutely. Yeah. But, and, and maybe someday. Yeah, perhaps. But one of the cool things, speaking of cowboys, was the executive director of the ranch is a cowboy, Cowboy Mike. And Mike's, Mike really loves well. And he talks about being all in. He, he calls it plus five. And we, don't, we won't get into what that means. But yeah. it's, it's all in, which means you're, you're going to, you're going to have to do some things that don't come natural, potentially make you uncomfortable. Yeah. And probably cost, not just financially, but the cost will be to your pride, to your sense of comfort, comfortability, yeah. uh, predictability. It's like um, asking somebody to jump off of, of a rock ledge into a lake and you hope that somebody has checked for logs and rocks <laughs> under the surface of the water. <laughs> you hope. Yeah. But what if you learn? And you, this is quite a process. We're not going to go into detail on the podcast. Sure. But, but, but what, this is quite a process that you're going through. Yeah. If you could share what's one thing that you've as you've gone through this process as a parent, as a father that, that has come to you, that, that was maybe an aha moment, you know, or something that you like, well, I missed that. Boom. There it is. It, is, is there something that they brought to you that you went, Oh, wish I'd have known. Um, uh, so it's 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 uh, it's hard not not to get emotional with that question. Mm. I think uh, you 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 think you know certain things, um, but I know that it meant the world to my daughter for us to show up. Uh, just be seen. Yeah, I I didn't know what impact that that would have. Mm. And I didn't know how it would impact me because you don't realize how important you are to your kids because they'll tell you just the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've all been on the receiving end of that. Yeah. But, but showing up mm. hard open, mm -hmm. doing the work. And that's yeah. what we've been communicating to yeah. her. Listen, you do your work. We're in it with you. We're learning. We're vulnerable. We've goofed up. Let's move forward together. Puts us on a level playing field. Yeah. Like we were all moving, not you screwed up. We're dropping you off here until you get your crap together. When you're, when you're through your issues, you can get back on, on the Bailey train. That is not the message that we believe. Uh, or want to communicate, it's, wow, we've got a lot of growing to do, all of us. Yeah. And thank you for willing, be willing to have the courage to do the work. We're in it with you. What a beautiful message. And, and isn't that true of all of us? Uh, if you're, I'm going to say, if you're open to it, if you're open to taking the action, I will use that word action on every show, I think. Yeah. If you're open to it, there's so much more 
that we can learn and develop into our lives. It's hard to, but but it's important to, it's very difficult to raise a child in which in any one day, (laughs) the first few years of their life, if you're not available on board watching, you can lose them. I mean, it's, it's quickly, it can be like yeah. life or yeah. death, right? I mean, we're sitting out here looking at a stream in the background, Yeah. but for a two-year-old, that could be, that, a, it's danger. That, that could yeah. be a lethal yeah. event, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, for sure. So, so literally you're training yourself all day long. How do I keep this little person safe? And somehow in your mind, you never out, outgrow that initial protective or whatnot. And so what I'm learning is with, with Nikki, I get to enjoy the growth and the maturity and the, mm. and, and the unique personality that she's becoming as this, not child, but as this person that, and this is, this is beautiful for me. Um, how do I get to learn from my beautiful daughter? That's a very different approach than how do I get her fixed? Boy, you, you got me right in the heart there, Paul. And I, I mean, immediately you said that I was thinking about my own daughter as she goes through her freshman year of college, uh, really with the ultimate goal. Her ultimate goal would be to perform on Broadway, you know, at some point. And so we've, we've watched her go through this, this process. And now she's at the stage where she's being trained up. You know, she's, she's left the nest. She's being trained by, you know, professional people to, with the ultimate goal to get her where she, she wants to go. And, and, uh, you know, there, there really isn't anything, uh, that we wouldn't do to help her achieve that dream. Right. 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 So we get to either treat them as an extension of us yeah, and control or fix or at, at least denigrate the value that God has imbued them with, right? Or we get to release them to live out their lives as creatively and as uniquely and as legitimately as God has offered us. And that's, that's the story that I want to be a, a part of. And that's been, yeah, that's been the big shift to, to circle oh, way man. back to your, to your first, to your first question. And that I know she has value. I knew she had value, but I didn't see the value in the way that I do now. And her knowing kind of got pressed into the corner. Yeah. Of it. yeah. <laughs> so, so her knowing that that's how I see it now mm. actually accelerates that blossoming and that development. Whereas I could slow that down or I could retard that, 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 that process. Yeah. That, you know, that, you know, that's so beautiful because it, it, I feel like as I've, as I've talked with other men and, and hear various things that, you know, if I'd have to say, if there's a regret that some guys had, they didn't participate in their kid's life. They weren't as present as they possibly could be. And when these big situations come up, right? you know, you got to show up and it's an opportunity to change the game. And, you know, I think that's available to all of us, you know, regardless of the situation. And I know guys, I mean, you, you hear the stories, I hear the stories. There are people that have st- store eats right about their their families but man at the end of the day you got god you got your family and a handful of people that are close to you which is what we're doing this weekend yeah setting time aside intentionally out of out of very busy schedules yes to say i have to prioritize my personal and spiritual growth yeah so that when i'm engaging with my wife with my daughter with my son I don't waste the opportunities yeah. that otherwise I will not be 
prepared for. The language that we're hearing this, this weekend, the reminders of who we are uh, because of what God has done and is doing will matter this next week to my family. It will matter next month. It's why it's so important. In fact, Paul and I just sat through a, a workshop on the, the, the power of asking uh, good questions. And what's interesting is the guy that was doing that workshop talked about, he, he, he's, a, he's a therapist. And one of the things he said is he never asked anybody why. And the minute he said it, I, I had this image of, of myself as a, as a father asking my child why they did something. And, and, and you know, we, this is a, this is a go-to question that a lot of people do. And, I, and as I was reflecting on it in the moment, and as he was describing why he never asked why, I was thinking to myself, wow, that really is a damaging question. And I, as I was relaying to you in the room after we uh, the workshop when we had a chance to talk about it, I said, man, how many times did we hear, you know, does somebody say to little Johnny, what, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? And with a tone of voice that is very accusatory and essentially leaving them no place to go, but to almost curl up in a little ball. And, and the question in that moment is what kind of damage have you caused in that moment that might not show up mm. for a number of years down the line? Absolutely. And so, you know, I think part of the reason I wanted to go to that workshop is obviously I'm a men's life coach. It's important for me to ask really good questions, but not just as a coach. It's important for me to ask good questions on the podcast. It's important for me to ask good questions of my friends mm. and just in general. Yeah. Because it's all about building those relationships, whether it's with our children or with our uh, That's uh, right. clients. You know, as a financial advisor, you got to be able to ask very um, uh, detail-oriented questions and build relationship. Otherwise, they're not going to they're not going to trust you as a financial advisor, and that's not good. That's right. And, and what comes to mind my mind is, and as as I have asked also that why question. <laughs> that does not come from a place of curiosity or invitation. Right. That that comes from a place of judgment um, or um, accusation. Yes. Or maybe even condemnation. Wow. So, yeah. So, so, and this is a little, I suppose, teaser for maybe the next time we, we, we talk, I, I've been, more acquainted with um, the work of the Arbinger Institute. And one of the things that I have picked up as far as the question I need to ask myself, and that is simply, as I approach this person, am I coming at it? Do I have a heart of peace or do I have a heart at war? Ooh. And with my kids, I, I have to say, oftentimes, especially in their younger years, when I was irritated, by behaviors, I was on the war path. I may have not admitted to that, but I was not at all interested many times yeah. in engaging and inviting them to relationships so that we could move forward together. I just wanted retribution. I wanted, I wanted the lesson to sting, to, to, to land. And it didn't occur to me that that was not serving my ultimate goal. Yeah. And so I'm asking myself now as I engage, do I have a heart at peace or at war? And if I am at peace, mm. I am able to be inquisitive and invitational in these good questions. If I'm at war, there's no room. I have no interest in drawing you in. It's all about the, the punishment. Yeah, that, that's so good, Paul. You know, it's really funny. I um, Over the last couple of years, and I think it's really as I've become a little bit more oriented and, and understand what what, uh, what my Holy Father has for me, that word invitation. Oh, you know, I mean, I think I grew up in a world where it was like, oh, did you get invited to a party? You know, <laughs> some more along that lines. But that word invitation. Yeah. And making that invitation to those people around us, the people that we love, our friends, our family, the invitation to engage and build relationship. 
what a powerful world right. word that is and 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 um God, Jesus models that Jesus models that everywhere he goes throughout scripture absolutely and if we're going to invite people to conversation to relationship it means that we have an openness to be available without strings and as you just mentioned when Jesus invited to relationship he had the capacity obviously as the son of god but also he knew he was deeply loved by the father hmm. there was no fear of loss all things were given to him as we've been learning from ephesians 1 yeah we have all yeah. things there is no ultimate loss and so when we are not concerned about protecting something that we believe is ours. We can live with open hands and invite as opposed to protect and position. Yeah, that is such a great way to, to begin to wrap up this podcast today, because I think in the end, I'm not even sure what we do. We knew what we were doing at the time, Paul. We, you know, we, we, we took a break from our men's small group for, I remember this, and it was uh, July of the summer months. And we thought we need to come up with a name. We need to come up with a name. And I, I remember just going through scripture, just going through everything I could get my hands on. And I just stopped at this idea of Jesus Christ walking on earth as a true man, modeling everything. And even after we selected that, it really wasn't down the road. I think I, I, I wore that for a couple of years before I finally figured out what that truly meant to me personally and having a group called true man that we led and having the true man podcast and true man life coaching this idea that Jesus Christ is the greatest, most masculine role model that ever walked the face of the earth. It just is, um, I, it's hard for me to even put words to, mm. uh, it's just what a model. Absolutely. What a model. And um, I tell a lot of people, I just feel so blessed to be entrusted with this idea of carrying on the true man brand. I almost hate to call it the brand, but I mean, you know, it's a part of my business, but I feel entrusted by God to use the phrase true man mm. and to help men figure out, people have asked me you know, over the last few years, well, Mike, what, how would you define true man? And I tried for the longest time to figure this out, Paul. And my conclusion to this is, short of just two words, follow me, that Jesus says, which I think are critically important to being a true man, you got to follow him in order to be a true man. I want every man to define what a true man is for them. And I think that that's the, the beauty Jesus makes himself available to us all. And when we walk with him, we can define what that looks like on our own terms. Mm. And I find tremendous peace and beauty in that. Mm. Yeah, that he has a story that's unique to everyone that he calls to himself. No one's left out. Yes. He already knows the end. He, he is in control of the outcome. We can relax and be a part of the story yeah. as opposed to trying to mani manipulate it. Exactly. Hmm. And the beauty of that is just as we had this conversation, you know, about fathering, that's what it's all about. It's all about, you know, we, we walk with him and we define our life through him, with him, uh, helping us guide, be the guide along the way and holding our, our hope in him. And, and, uh, um, Gosh, Paul, we're so lucky uh, to be able to do this. Um, so glad we started it. It's pretty amazing. I would have never said a couple of years ago, yeah, we'll, we'll just be sitting outside one Saturday in Black Mountain, North Carolina, yeah. recording a podcast with the fall leaves around us. Yeah. But but here we are. So thank you, Paul, for coming on the the podcast. It's always great. To have a brother like you. Great to be here. Absolutely. Uh, to do the podcast. Bet. Any any last words you'd like to part us with, Paul, before we uh, wrap up today? I guess I just encourage those that are part of this listenership to uh, just anticipate with a, a sense of hopefulness <sighs> that God 
knows what he's doing. He's not forgotten you. He, he sees the pain. He sees the confusion. He's offering opportunities. And he is waiting at every turn to bless those he loves. Amen to that. Paul, always a pleasure. You're always welcome back on the Appreciate True it. Man podcast. Take care. Thank you, brother.